The world's pollinators are in trouble. Without them, what will the future of food be? Pollen does a lot more than just make you sneeze. It's also a really effective reproductive strategy, and plants have been relying on it for more than 375 million years. Several species have co-evolved along with plants to be great pollinators. Some examples are honeybees, wild bees, butterflies, beetles, birds, and bats. They're all superheroes of pollination. But you most frequently hear about honeybees. Honeybees in general are just plain awesome. They can tell time, they can see polarized light, and they communicate with sweet dance moves. But they're also responsible for $15 billion in revenue of food crops in the United States alone. Worldwide, they create or contribute about a third of all the food we eat. But bees have been disappearing. The phenomenon is called colony collapse disorder, and scientists are still not entirely certain what causes it. In general, worker bees leave the hive and never return, and that leaves the queen and larva to starve to death. According to the Bee Informed Partnership, from 2010 to 2014, we saw bee colonies decline by 30% year over year. So what could be the cause? Well, it might be a collection of things like climate change, fungal infections, insecticides, urbanization, and more. Without these pollinators, we won't starve, but certain foods could become very rare or extremely expensive, and some might disappear forever. So what can we do to protect food and bees? Well, in 2014, the White House launched the Pollinator Health Task Force under the leadership of the Environmental Protection Agency and the Department of Agriculture. It's all about finding ways to promote the health of pollinators in general, including helping honeybee losses move to sustainable levels and protecting the monarch butterfly. And this is not just a US-centric effort, it's global. In Norway, there's a project to make a bee highway in Oslo. Public and private entities have come together to turn rooftops and other lands into bee-friendly zones with plants that promote bee colonies. And airports are actually hiring beekeepers to build hives on unused land. Oh, and uh, this wouldn't be an episode of Forward Thinking if we didn't eventually work our way around to robots. Yeah, people are building robo-bees at Harvard. Now, Bees are really small, they're light, and they're incredibly efficient, which are three things your typical robot isn't. So there are some big design challenges. The team has to figure out ways to miniaturize all these components, to make wings that can fold up like origami, to create ultra-light circuitry that works on very little power so the device can fly around on its own. But they think that by the 2040s, their bees will be able to autonomously fly around and forage and even support colonies. How cool is that? Meanwhile, there's stuff you and I can do to help bees, like plant a flowering garden, or even just a single flower pot. Now I've got a question for you. What do you think we should do to help save the bees? I wanna hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you hit like and join the Forward Thinking Think Tank by subscribing to the channel. Big thanks to Toyota for sponsoring our show and making it possible. And don't be lame. Check out these other great videos right over here.